remember starting this class and we had the tree of the knowledge of good people and the tree of life. I remember having deep questions on sharing in this class, wondering how do I know that some of you, any of you, anybody would change and in the future not go by the knowledge of good and evil, but go by lamb life. How would I how how can I have some assurance that somebody's going to get this because there is this nagging feeling that we hear the truth and yet the principle of the life of Christ doesn't get formed in us. And so given the right circumstances, we will go back to right and wrong, good and evil, the view as seen from the earth. <clears throat> And the assurance that I can have that that won't happen is that every day in your relationships, every day in your arguments with somebody, when you lay down the right, your rights and the thing that is right, when you lay down your life realizing that if the issue is us fighting over what's right and what's wrong, even if I win, no one has received life. If I lay down my life, there is the potential of Christ coming forth out of this. So the assurance of that is, is that we, we're put into different situations where we will appear wrong. See, that's it. We want to be right. We don't want to appear wrong, but I don't want to be right. I want Christ formed in me, which many times makes you appear wrong. <laughs> and because they go by the knowledge of good and evil, then if you're if they're right, then you're there is no alternative. There is no I'm right and you're lamb life. There I'm right and you're wrong, especially if you open not your mouth. Make sense to anybody? But you have to be willing to be with the Lord where he is. You have to be willing to um, want to release life, even if it means that you're dead. So that's the assurance. The assurance of that is that we're practicing. Yeah. All right. Well, been a good class. Anybody uh, have anything to share, or the Lord put something on your heart, or is any, uh, I'll put it like this, is there any particular thing that anyone got out of this class that maybe you didn't, including some of the things that might have been, we might have read in the books, or something in the book, or something like that. Anybody want to make a comment? Why don't you come on over here? The Lord's been uh, speaking to me for a while about um, um, letting, um, laying down your life in the ways that you, you, you're wrong in the eyes of others. And he's been talking to me about this a lot and how that is how we fill up on the afflictions for the body of Christ's sake that's lacking in the church. And um, how that because we all have one life, since we're one body, we're only one life. We can't have the life of Christ without being in the body. And yet because none of us are really fully complete in, in walking in that, there's, there are wrongs that come and we inflict transgressions on one another and inconvenience one another. And the Lord's been talking to me how I've been right a lot of times in um, wanting to correct a problem and see it in the person and say, well, do this or do that. And you just you know, stop acting that way, not this way. And under, underneath it really wasn't even a real crusade of making sure things were right. It actually was so that I wouldn't be. It was a noble cause that was covering up an ugly, selfish motive. And so it wasn't even about like wrong, it was really about me. <laughs> so um, the Lord's been talking to me about um, giving my life um, for the sake of, of the body of Christ, who are still all coming in, just like I am coming in with the knowledge of Christ, and being willing to bear sufferings or inconveniences or misunderstandings simply because people 
just like we are, you don't really have Christ one minute yet. And, and that's giving more life to them than, than, than correcting or, or saying the right thing. And I have a, um, a few scriptures that the Lord has given me on this. And I was sitting in front of me when I, they just all came, almost I don't think so angry. Ephesians 3.13 says, Wherefore I desire that you faint not at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. Colossians 1.24 says, Who now rejoice in my sufferings for you, and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church. And then 2 Corinthians 1, 5 and 6 says, For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also abounds by Christ. And whether we be afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effectual in the enduring of the same sufferings which we also suffer. Or whether we be comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. And the Lord is just speaking to that spirit that's just so willing to be uh, put through things that if I want to be right, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to go through those things. You know? But because Paul saw the Lord and he knew the Lord, he had no problem suffering for the church, even though the churches he was speaking to were basically carnal. And um, I have not been like that. <laughs> you know, I have not been that way. But I see it not only in the class, not only in the book we read, but in the Word and the Scriptures and Paul's speaking that he not only suffered for the sake of the church, he rejoiced in it. Because it was for their glory. You know, it was his sufferings which was, was the church's glory. And I just, I don't care for me. I don't want to not only suffer, be inconvenienced, be made low, be whatever the situation calls for, but I want to do that rejoicing. Gladly. I am glad not just I went through this and this is rough and I got so over it. <laughs> and gladly, knowing that I'm losing life, knowing that it's for the body's sake. Like 
21. Is Lord, I don't want to be deceived. Lord, I don't want to be deceived. And y'all wouldn't know how to see that being. I walked around in a, in a white sheet for a year, barefooted, you know. And, and this, this and that. <laughs> You know, and uh, but my heart was toward the Lord, and I, you know, I mean, sometimes I think, how did I get here in this place? And all I, all I know is I kept going. You know, I found out I was deceived. I said, well, I ain't doing that anymore. But you know, I, I still wanted the Lord. I still wanted the Lord, and, and just, and I still want the Lord. You know, and uh, one one thing that I did during this class was probably at least every class or every other class. I, I just wrote a prayer, you know, to the Lord. It's like, Lord, you know, I, I, I see there's this nature, this land, you know, and if I'm faking it, if it's not real, if it's not the truth, the truth, you know, if it's not you, it's not mine, then, you know, don't let me continue. Don't let me continue. You know, and even I found myself, again, <laughs> another little prayer over there, you know, because uh, I, I remember driving down uh, the road one morning after taking Jesse to work. Me and the Lord had a good time about five or six in the morning, you know. And uh, I was just getting off the on ramp, you know. And, and I had my hands up, and I, w- I wasn't even driving the car. I was just, you know, hey, if it's not real, if it's not real, you know, why am I here? Why am I doing this? What does it mean? Nothing, you know. Make it real, and uh, and that's what this class just uh, impressed upon me the the need for the reality of the land of that nature to be my life to be my my center my modus operandi whatever however many words that you can say that would we're talking about the order of a person's life and spirit. What I desire, you know, and so you know, I'm, I have nothing else. I have nothing else but to but the Lord. I have nothing else but the Lord, and to, to know Him in His reality, His, his Spirit, and truth, and what He is. And so you know, whatever it takes, however many prayers, whatever, you know, that it would be life and Spirit.
to have everything we need for our lives. Let's put it that way. But it is all without purpose if there is no lamb. His spirit and nature should fill all that we do, all that we say, all that we are, all that we see, all. What do we have right there? Christ, all in and all. His spirit and nature filling. Sadly, many go to minister to the Lord, but they have no lamb. They falsely assume that the wood and fire are enough and fail to recognize that the one thing that sanctifies all sacrifices is the lamb in his nature. The question that Isaac asked his father was, where is the lamb? Where is the lamb that will willingly give his son? Yeah. I, I need the lamb. I need to let the lamb of God, his life, fill every part. Every part. Christ, all in and all. I don't want to find myself doing this and doing that and quote unquote pouring out and doing this and doing that and then have to turn around and look around and go, I've got the fire, I've got the wood, I've got the knife, I've got an altar, but where is the lamb? I don't want to. I don't want to wake up and look around and wonder where is the lamb. And this class. drafting what already the Holy Spirit has been speaking has just been dragging it home day in and day out. But it is all about the Lamb. Before the foundation of the world, there was the Lamb. After, there will still be the Lamb. He's the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Before you were, the Lamb of God was there. After you were gone, the Lamb of God will still be there. After I am gone, after everything else, after I strive or manipulate or work to get this that I want in the earth, after all that has been done away with, the Lamb will still prevail. The Lamb will still be on the throne. So I can choose to stop working and striving and manipulating these things in the earth and doing this and that and go for the one thing that will remain, the one thing that is eternal, and that is the Lamb. The end of all things, the end of me, the end of Cassie will be the Lamb. Not by my own way, not by my own choosing, because... I mean, it is by my choosing, but it is by the very spirit of his nature. It's nature. It's nature. I want the nature. Not the doctrine, not the theology, not the talk. I want the nature. If it is your nature, it is natural. If it is my nature, it will be natural to live lamb. To live the lamb. To lay it down. When all is done away. All. People look at you and you criticize and you go, whatever. She's the biggest place in this room. Who you better believe of a man, the Lamb of God, will lay down and say, Jesus is Lord, sits on the throne, and will prevail forevermore. Thank God John did not just stop when he heard Lion of Judah turn and look. He saw the Lamb. And that's that's what I hear ringing through the hole of my heart. Will you turn and look and see the lamb? Don't just hear what you want to hear. Ooh, lion and power. Ooh, so just hear what you want to hear. Turn and see the lamb as ever. Whatever you are, ever in my heart. That's the Lord.
the land. Let's let our walk, let's let everything work out. It'll be about getting up, getting up, and looking up and going, oh, I want to see the Lamb of God. That's what I want to let my eyes turn to. And we know that, that reading and everything, these things are being burned in my heart. just a subject except to the bride and we sing the wife of the lamb to her he is a passion His heart is for 
the new man. And Lord, he will, he will jump at the opportunity to form the new man. He will jump at the opportunity of individual dying seeds who, who say, crush me that we might be bred. That a greater expression of Christ may come through a corporate, a, a universal man rather than individual men and women. So Father, instead of our enemies or our problems, Lord, that, whatever it is, that is hindering the clearer expression, the clearer reception, the clearer flow of life, we in spirit and in heart offer it up now and say, Settle it by Sunday night so that you can do great and mighty things as from your view. That you would say great and mighty things happen, not from our view. That you would be greatly satisfied. Not just with the results, but with all the individual hearts who lay down things that may not even be hindering them, may not even be causing a stumbling block for them, but it could be for others. So Lord Jesus, be in us. Be free in us. Holy Spirit, have your freedom. Sunday night. Have your freedom. Have your way. We thank you, Father, now. We've already received it. We've already believed it. We, we believe that it's just now the carrying out of what we prayed and agreed with here. We want to thank you before that word is fully manifested. We want to say that you are our Father. Jesus, you are our life and our Lord. Holy Spirit, oh, what a wonderful companion. What a wonderful, wonderful friend of Jesus that you are. Declarer of Jesus that you are. Thank you for speaking of him. Thank you that you made us declarers not of what's going on on the earth, but what's going on inside. Great are your Lord and greatly to be praised. Now, Lord, seal these things that we've shared during the course of this class as this ends with Amen tonight. Seal it in our hearts and minds. Not doctrines of land life, but the reality, the living reality. Make it grow within us. Make it grow. Make it live. Make it live within us. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.